2-2. Breaking ball down the line. That's a fair ball. In from third is Douglas. Rounding third is Marzo. Smith. Uh-oh. Breaks the run. He's going back. It gets by Butler. Now they're telling him to get up and go. And Bradley Smith goes to third in a hole there, but he drives in two, and it's 8-4 really well he spelled off a couple of pitches sped up the bat just a, just a little bit that swing right there enough to get it down the line the two runs were scoring he was thinking about possibly going three right here he gets caught up then diving back and gets very lucky all right we're going to introduce the concept of double cuts or doubles cuts with no runners on in this video at the conclusion of this, hopefully we'll go back and look at that opening video and understand where we can make improvements. Double cuts are kind of simple because in all but one situation, everybody's kind of doing the same thing. Let's talk about the scenario and define when we're going to do it. We do a doubles cut when they hit a sure double. A sure double is where we are able to see the numbers of the outfielders going to chase the ball. So they turn around and run towards the ball, which is past them. We know 100% of the time that that is going to be a double. We give that to the hitter. It's not we give it. We can't do anything about it. So the play is going to be organized at the base we can do something about, which is third base. A little note before we go in it is that some hits are like borderline, like maybe it's a single, maybe you could stretch it into a double. This isn't for those plays. So the biggest part of double cuts is that we need to send out both middle infielders in a lead and trail cut. So if it's hit towards the uh, right field side, our second base, just like normal, is going to go out and be the lead cut. The only real difference is he needs to go out a little deeper, depending on the arm of his outfielder that's going to be throwing to him. Now, the tricky part is our other middle infielder follows him about maybe 15 feet behind him, maybe a little bit more, and forms the trail cut. And he's there because these outfielders have a long throw into the lead cut, and often that throw is bad. It has a weird hop, it's offline, and he could be essentially backing up the lead cut. Good throws are handled by the lead cut, in this case, second base. Bad throws by the trail cut, in this case, shortstop. In this play, you are always going to catch the ball and be prepared to relay the ball to where the play is, which is at third base. Now, this is true, as we'll see, whether it's hit to the left-hand side or the right-hand side. We just kind of flip the rolls around. So we'll go over that in a second. Let's do the other positions now. The pitcher, oh shoot, he just gave up a gap double. He needs to run just to the right-hand side of third base and be the backup. That's generally the pitcher's role in pretty much everything, which is back up the play. And you have to know where the play is. Left field is going to run and back up third base to the left-hand side. One thing I notice a lot with little leaguers, whether it's trail cut, whether it's backing up third base or another play is backing up home, is your backup is way too close. It needs to be really far back. Because we don't want to put ourselves right by third, so any bad throw to the third baseman is also going to be a bad throw to us. So pretty far back. So that backs it up. Now this one is missed a lot. Second base is unoccupied. It's not a huge deal that it's unoccupied, but if we want to catch this runner, maybe he made a mistake or something, we need somebody at second, and that somebody is the first baseman. The first baseman basically just follows the runner. I think that's a good way of thinking about it because if this runner just decides to stop at first, he's a slow runner, or maybe it was like semi in between a single and a double, then you're not overly committing to going towards second base early. So you just kind of follow the runner over and then cover in the event that you're needed. So that pretty much forms the play. 
Let's take a look at a left field gap. It's the same play, really. So in this case, they hit the ball way over here in the left field gap. The outfielders turn and show their numbers. This time, the shortstop forms the lead cut. He gets on a line between where the ball is fielded and where the play is at third. It's very common for the shortstop to come out like here, and it doesn't make any sense. Like, they field it, they throw it this way, and then they throw this way. And it also doesn't really account well for bad throws. A bad throw goes over here in this direction. A bad throw that he misses will at least dribble towards the direction of the play. Second base, you have to run aggressively to be that trail cut. Again, going to, don't go too close to him. I think these arrows are kind of misleading because it makes it seem like you're on top of each other, but you're not. Pitcher, you back up the play on a line. I don't think this arrow is right either. We really want you kind of like right here. So if you draw a line for where they're likely to throw, then you'll be behind it very, very far. First base follows the runner over to second. And it's kind of like the opposite. The right fielder is not backing up first base. He's backing up, okay, there might be a throw into second, taking advantage of some base running mistakes. So he's here just in the event that craziness happens. I think it's a good general rule for the left and right field. If it's not hit to you, run in towards the infield. Like, you're going to be useful if that happens. So that's pretty much true if it's down. This is a hard play for the second baseman. You have to be fast. So if it's hit uh, down the third baseline, it's the exact same play. Uh, the reason is third base can't go out and be the trail cut because he's needed a third. So second base needs to sprint as fast as he can, and you need to get on a line. Again, don't go out into this shallow outfield shortstop. You have to get on a line for where the play is. First base trails over. Right field does useful things. Center field is just going over just in case. Now, the really weird double cut comes when they hit it towards the right field line. The reason it's weird is that it's such a long run for that shortstop to make it all the way over here. So what we do is we just send out the first baseman to be the trail cut, the second baseman, the lead cut. And that way shortstop just needs to go just a little distance towards second, which the first baseman would have done. But the first baseman can just take this little, you know, not too far of a path out to be that double cut guy. Left fielder backs up, just like before, and pitcher backs up. Center fielder goes and see if he does, can do anything useful. So now with that information, that was a little long because I did it all in one video, double cuts with no runners on. So let's look at this play again, and let's see if we can improve it. Two, let's two. turn off the sound. So we can see here that this is a sure double down the left field line or or the third base line now look right now at that shortstop the shortstop is not on a line between where the ball is fielded and where it's going which is third base so they're kind of forming a triangle when they need to form a line let's actually skip ahead a little bit because we get a good view of where everybody <laughs> is right here so you can see where the second baseman is he's covering second base which is not correct because if this throw is offline, it was a good throw, but we always need to prepare for the worst. There's nobody there to collect the throw and maybe make that play at third. We can also see the pitcher just kind of chilling out. He's not going and backing up where the throw is going to be, which is to third on a line. Ironically, he ended up accidentally backing up <laughs> the throw kind of to the uh, lead cut. Because if it got through him, if he missed it, overthrow or whatever, the pitcher would have got it. That was an accident, though. We can see the first baseman over there. He's just chilling, watching the play, and not doing anything useful. So that's how we could improve it. First baseman goes to second. Second baseman goes out to form the trail cut. Shortstop needs to get on a line. And there you go. Now, this is a pretty good... This could happen. If he was properly on a line, runner changes his mind. And here we have an overthrow. Now, let's take a look. Oh, we saw it before. Let's go back because we kind of saw what happened. Is that, look how on that overthrow to second, that right fielder, if he was positioned, you know, 20 feet behind the second baseman, he probably would have got that. 
in a way which prevented the runner from advancing to third. And that's the whole value of doing these plays. It's about mitigating damage. And what I mean by that is like, if bad stuff is going to happen, make sure it's not really bad. Make sure it's just kind of bad. You prevent them from getting that extra base, that extra run. And those added up over the course of the game make all the difference. All right. Um, that concludes this lesson. It really gets complicated when we can do double scuts with runners on. So stay tuned for that lesson.